Hi guys, so I thought I would do a little house plant tour and I figured we'd start here. These are most of my carnivorous plants. Back here are my baby pitcher plants, Nepenthes. These three are ones that I got a couple years ago. Nepenthes Suki, Nepenthes Lady Luck, Nepenthes Miranda, and this one right up here in the front is Nepenthes bicalcarata, which is called also the famed pitcher plant. And it's super tiny right now. I'm really excited to see it grow. And it actually already has little fangs on these two baby pitchers that came with it. They're so cute and tiny. And this year, I was really fortunate to get a mature pitcher from my Nepenthes Miranda. It's so cool. It has a very red opening to the pitcher. And these sort of deeper like stripes going down. And I have three pictures right now on the Lady Luck. This one looks like it's drying out a little bit. It's pretty hard to keep the humidity high enough for them. Which is why I try to keep this little baby humidifier going at all times. Otherwise, for the most part, I have to wait until the summertime when they can go outside to really get a good amount of growth. I like to keep a humidity gauge by the plants. It's right now at 61%, which is decent enough. So, I also have here a Venus flytrap, and it looks like it's dropping quite a few of its traps, but it also needs to go into a uh, dormancy pretty soon in the next couple months. It's making a lot of new traps on the center, so it seems like it's pretty happy right here. And then, right here I have some sundews. This one is the first sundew that I've had. I've had it for a couple years now. And I first got into um, sundews when I was having a gnat problem. And uh, I started buying those sticky traps and they worked pretty well. But what worked the best was getting just one of these sundews. Became very, very well fed. They really showed up a lot of these blooms, blossoms out the top, and drop a ton of seeds. So they're super, super easy to propagate. And then this one right here is a pretty new addition. It's pretty wet right now, so I can't really pick it up. But it's called Marston's Dragon. And it creates these really cool sticky traps, which come off on one stalk and then separate sort of fork into two. And from what I understand, this can grow to be pretty big, like pretty tall. It might even end up around this tall once it uh, starts to flourish a little bit more. And it's even starting to make a couple of new ones coming out since I planted it. And then finally is this uh, Chinese money plant, which is called Pilea peperomoides, I think. And this was a gift from one of my friends who really likes to propagate plants. So she gave me this one. 
and it seems to be doing pretty well here. This here is a south-facing window, and most of these plants, except for the sundews and the Venus flytrap, really like more of a diffused light, so I try to keep this area covered by the blinds, that way they don't get too much light. And the Chinese money plant also likes more of a, a bright diffused light, so seems to be liking it here. The sundew and the Venus flytrap generally like more light, um, but the sundews are pretty adaptable and the Venus flytrap is going to have to go into a cold location for dormancy soon anyway, so it's not bad here. Okay, I can move on to some other plants. So, this is my oldest uh, pitcher plant that I have. You can tell it's very large. Um, it's, I think, around, it's either 9 or 10 years old now. At least, I got it 9 or 10 years ago. And it has been through a lot. And it's it survived a lot of uh, a lot of um, learning experiences for me. When I got it, I had no idea how to take care of it. And it's only within the past couple of years that I've sort of been taking good care of it. And there was a period of about three to four years where I didn't even get any new pictures on it. It was without pictures for quite a while until I learned that it needs high humidity, it needs distilled water, it needs a particular potting mix, and um, as you can see, I've been getting some nice big pictures on it since then. This is the sort of typical pitcher plant you'd find at the garden center, um, Home Depot, if you're lucky, Lowe's, Menards, if you're lucky, because usually they don't get a lot of them in. And right now it's actually probably getting a little bit too much sun, so I'm gonna pull this down, making sure that it's always getting some form of a diffused light getting a new picture right here. And actually, the raccoons ripped off, I want to say, four pictures this summer. I was so disappointed in them. You could see kind of the aftermath of one of them right here. Super bummed out. It's made several new ones this summer. I'm very, very happy about that. And it's in the bathroom, which is a good place for it uh, because it can get the humidity from showers. Um, if you want to have a pitcher plant and you have a bathroom with a window, a really good location for it in the winter time when you can't put it outside, which uh, I always put all of my plants outside in the summertime. They just enjoy that summer weather. It's more similar to their native weather. So, definitely needs a little trim in the springtime, but just going to leave it be for now. And down here, I'm going to move the camera. So, right below my big picture plant is a new addition. And this was one that I saw at Home Depot. And it's the same one as this one. I believe they're Nepenthes ventrata. 
which is a hybrid, no, I'm pretty sure, it's a hybrid between uh, Nepenthes ventricosa and Nepenthes alata, which this is the typical plant you're going to see at garden centers. And honestly, these plants are very, very easy. They're hard to kill, um, though if you want the best out of them, you want to water them very often. They like to always have wet soil, and they like to be watered with distilled water only. Um, that's the case with every single carnivorous plant. And you can see right down here, I have my distilled water. And you can just buy these jugs from any grocery store. And I also have this one sitting in a little tray with the rocks. And so the water runoff will sit in here and provide a little bit of humidity for it. These guys, despite being in the bathroom, and get the shower humidity. They do dry out, uh, so you can also take a clear plastic bag and put it over them at nighttime if you really want to encourage extra humidity, but uh, but it's, it's not entirely necessary to do that. This guy's looking really rough right now. He, uh, he hasn't really adjusted quite yet since I bought him a couple months ago, but I think by next summer he's going to be looking really good. I see some really nice new growth coming off the base here. These here. There's like a tiny little picture in here. Um, I think this stalk in particular is going to look really nice. And I see some fresh leaves right here, too, so we'll see what happens to him. I think he's going to look really nice. Okay. So, this is in a west-facing window, and it is um, my whole orchid table, I guess you'd say. This is actually uh, in the room where I record uh, most of my videos. And it's a, it's a nice little happy green space. I, I really like having it here. So, what do we have here? We have four of your typical moth orchids. What is it? Phalaenopsis orchids. These are the ones that you're pretty much going to find at any garden center. Home Depot, Trader Joe's, Lowe's, Menards, you'll typically see an orchid table with these types. And they're very easy to take care of. Um, they have these pretty roots that come out, and if you're lucky, you can get them to bloom every year. And if you're really lucky, you might even be able to get them to bloom every six months or so. That's really cool, if you can. Me, I'm not so lucky. <laughs> I'm really working on getting these to bloom this year. Hopefully, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Maybe these ones, I don't know. I don't know if they're big enough quite yet. But anyway, so these two, actually three, were my mom's. And these two started to die, so she asked me if I wanted to take them, and I said, okay, I'll take them and see if I can bring them back. And they're looking good. I honestly blame these pots. They tend to pool a lot of water in the bottom, and if you're not careful draining it out, you'll have your roots rotting in the water down here, um, which orchids really hate. But they're starting to look good. Um, this one has some roots that need to be cut out, but 
it's getting a oh, it's getting a new leaf uh, coming out. I don't know if you could see on the camera, but I'll, I'll show a close up. Um, it's getting a new leaf right here. Let's see if I can get it to stay back where it was. I don't even know how I had it. Um, I'll just put it like this. This one, this is a nice new big leaf right on the top, and I'm getting some nice roots. This is a root cluster that I should trim off soon, probably, probably in the springtime I'll tackle that a little humidity gauge. Um, these two both bloomed last year. So, hopefully, they'll bloom again. I'm waiting on a new leaf for this one. And this one has a new leaf here. Some nice roots coming out here. And uh, this is also, this little one is also a Phalaenopsis, but it's a different kind. And it's a little baby excited to see it grow up one day. It's about uh, had it for two years, so we'll see. It's still very tiny, but it's growing. This is another Phalaenopsis. Um, it's a new addition. It just arrived like this. It's got a nice new leaf on the top. It's got kind of different looking leaves than the other ones. And the flowers that I saw, it has a really pretty, so, and it's quite large, so it should, shouldn't be too long until it actually blooms. And these two back here are a different type of orchid. They're Catalea orchids, and you could tell because they look different than the other ones. This one I've had for two years as well. It's finally starting to look bigger. It's got these little uh, roots coming out of the bottom. Very excited to see those come in. And I have a couple of roots that should be trimmed. And last but not least, this is also a new addition. Looks like it's having a new leaf coming in. And yeah, we'll see what happens to this one. It's a Jerry Riffield Paradise Future orchid. I think it's kind of a reddish color, it's supposed to be. This one kind of has green blooms, red blooms. I'm not sure what color these ones are. I kind of forgot. Pink, peach ish colors for these two. So, yeah, those are all of the orchids that I have right now. Okay, and here's just two um, plants. And these are in an east window, so they get a nice morning sun. And uh, this was another gift from my friend who likes to propagate plants. It's a spider plant, and it's just a little baby right now but it's got a couple of new leaves coming in. So it seems to be enjoying this spot, at least well enough to grow. And this is a croton my mom gave me for my birthday four years ago. And it's, uh, it's this really pretty variety that has yellow, maroon, and green shades all over the leaves. 
when she gave it to me, it was just a little, little squirt, and now it's, uh, it's growing to be a decent size. And it's, this is another plant you really can't kill, it's so easy. I would love uh, some more of these pinkish leaves to grow out, but I'm guessing it's not getting enough sunlight, or maybe it needs fertilizer. If you guys know, know how to get the really more speckled colors to come out, let me know, because otherwise most of the leaves coming out of here are not as spectacular as I feel like they could be. Okay, so there are a couple more plants here in another south-facing window. This is another new addition. It's an Anthurium Paris Black. This is probably a bad location for it. I don't think they like this much sunlight. But I'm just feeling it out, see how it, see how it looks. So, as you can see, it has these really pretty dark flowers on it, almost like a black color. I'm really excited to see this grow up bigger. Then over here is a Mother of Thousands. It's another gift from my friend who propagates plants. And it is just loving this spot. I'm getting a ton of new leaves popping out. And I read online that they really like terracotta pots. So I planted it in this terracotta so it can dry out well. It kind of has these succulent-like leaves. So it can handle a bit more drought than other plants. And finally, last but not least, is this Anthurium. I've had it for, I think, three or four years. It's another birthday gift from my mom. And I'm very excited that it has these four red blooms on it. Normally, I'm only getting like two or three blooms in this time. I got four. It also has this cute little leaf coming out. And I think it has this little baby plant coming from the bottom that I could probably split off if I look up how to do that. But it's such a pretty plant. Another plant that's really hard to kill if uh, you want an easy house plant that also gets some pretty flowers on it. I think these are technically inflorescences, but for all intents and purposes, they're pretty flowers. <laughs> anyway, um, very hard to kill. They like to dry out a little bit between waterings, but I've overwatered this plant and it uh, it definitely hasn't died on me so uh, let's see I think that's it this is all the plants that have come inside for the fall and the winter and um, thank you for watching I hope you found it a little bit interesting